We're all the way down to Module 13 and we're talking about payroll. We've actually just gone through Section 1 where we got a quick overview of the QuickBooks Payroll Service. Assuming at this point you've signed up with one of the services, you can now go through and actually start setting up your payroll. There's going to be several things you need to set up, but one of them is what we call payroll items. Let me go ahead and flip over to QuickBooks and I will talk to you about what those are and how to set those up. Payroll items are basically things you're going to add to or deduct from an employee's paycheck. You will want to set up the payroll items first before you start setting up your employees. That way when you do set up the employee you can pull those payroll items onto their setup screen. You're actually going to have to access the payroll items through the menu. There's no icon on the home screen for this. We're going to go up to employees and then you'll see manage payroll items. Here you can create a new payroll item or you can view or edit the payroll item list. I'm going to click on that so you can get a feel for what payroll items are. When payroll items are set up, you're going to have to tell it what type of item as well. You'll notice there's different types in this list here. If you have multiple payroll items of the same type, they'll be alphabetical. Yearly salary are those people that are paid a salary. You can see there's a item for the salary itself. There's going to be sick and vacation salary. And then you have the hourly ones. So here's overtime, regular pay, and sick and vacation for the hourly workers. Here's a bonus. There's a mileage reimbursement. See how that's an addition? There's health insurance. See how that's a deduction? And then you'll see company contribution and all of your federal taxes right here. The federal taxes will automatically be loaded for you. The state taxes will not. You'll have to tell QuickBooks which state your company works in and which state you're in so that you can deduct the correct taxes. You've got a couple of miscellaneous other taxes and a direct deposit option here at the bottom. Let's go through and add dental insurance. I'm going to right click anywhere and choose new. When you're adding a payroll item, you can use the easy setup or the custom. Let's go through one of each so you can see how this works. We're going to use the easy setup first. The first thing it asks me is what type of payroll item am I getting ready to create? Notice my choices are a compensation, it could be an insurance benefit, retirement, paid time off. I've got other miscellaneous additions and deductions as well I can choose from. This is going to be an insurance benefit and then I'll click next. What's going to happen now is it's going to load all the payroll setup options. You might have to give it a minute the first time you do it, but then this screen will pop up and ask you about setting up your insurance benefits. The first thing this asks me is to check all of these that apply. This happens to be dental insurance. There's also other insurance options down here. You can see there's group term, there's other medical dependent. You can kind of see the list there. I'm going to click next and it's going to ask me how is the dental insurance paid for? Some companies the employee pays for all of it or sometimes they split it with the employee. You just have to kind of choose the one that applies. There's also an option for the employee if they're going to pay for it all themselves. I'm going to go ahead and click next and then it's going to ask me the payee. This means when I actually write the check to pay for this, who is the check made payable to? Let's say it's Blue Cross. If Blue Cross is not on the vendor list yet, you will have to set it up. The next thing is the account number. That just basically means what is Blue Cross's account number they've given you so when you make the payments you can reference that. The other thing is what is the pay frequency for Blue Cross. If you don't need a pay schedule for it, you just click at the bottom here and that's probably their choice you're going to choose most often. I'm going to click next. Now all we have left to do is finish. What's going to happen now is when our payroll item list pops up, you'll see that you now have dental insurance on the list and notice it says company paid. If you needed to go through that and edit this, because look, health insurance is a deduction. I've set this up as a company contribution. I'm going to right click and edit that payroll item. And notice when I go through here that this is actually the setup that was the long one I told you about. You'll notice that I just took off the words company paid in the name here. 
I can track this by job or I can tell the payroll item is inactive. I'm going to click Next. Here's the agency Blue Cross. If I had plugged in my account number of Blue Cross, I'd see it here. And then here's the liability account. Right now, when I actually deduct the dental insurance from my employee's paycheck, it's going to go into a place called Payroll Liabilities in the Chart of Accounts. That's fine, but I probably want to put it into a sub-account as well so that I can track exactly where it is. You'll notice looking down this list that they've got employee health insurance payable, but they don't have anything about dental insurance. I'm going to go ahead and set that up. I'm going to go ahead and put in here a colon, and I'm going to put in dental insurance. And when I tap through it, it's going to ask me to set that up in the account list. Now, I'm going to go ahead and give it a number. I'm going to say 2800. Here's the dental insurance, and here you see it's a sub-account of payroll liabilities. I'm going to go ahead and save and close, and then click Next, and now we're on the screen that says Tax Tracking Type. Now there is no tax tracking type needed for this, but notice it could be a compensation, it could be that it's a fringe benefit, a moving expense, you can kind of see your choices there. The next thing it asks is, is this item I'm setting up subject to any of these taxes that you see here? And the answer is no in this particular case. I'll click Next. Is this item going to be calculated on quantity? Is it going to be calculated on hours or neither? This would be a neither because it would be a flat fee you're taking out. Is there a default rate? What that basically means is that for every employee, are you only going to deduct $100? Probably not. It's going to vary from employee to employee. You can also set a limit. If during the year you can only deduct X amount of dollars, you can set that up and let's say November comes and you've reached that limit, it won't deduct any of that again until the next year. I'm going to finish and now you're going to see there's the dental insurance. If you needed to delete any item here, you just right click and then you can choose your edit or delete options from here. Notice also you can make a payroll item inactive. This is one place where it's going to be very help. One thing I hear often is that people would rather pay a payroll service because they know that all of this is being set up correctly because a lot of this you may not know how to answer the questions if you're not familiar with how payroll works. What I want to do now is take you over into section 3 and we're going to set up some employees and then you'll see how these payroll items relate back to the employee setup. Hey everyone, Simon here. Thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe to our channel so you get notified of new videos that we upload. Click over there to get a free two-hour course to learn the essentials of QuickBooks 2018. And click over there to get the complete list of videos in this playlist. I'll see you next week with additional videos.